I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Okay, my friends, once again, it is time for Bible study dedicated to the only story's choice. The Gospel of Jesus Christ, the music and the spoken word. You're watching Life Source Victory Television live with me, your host, Pastor Jay Stan McCauley. Sit back, relax for the next eight minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word, the most high God. <clears throat> it's 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 Bible study time. My Bible study time that I spend with you. Now, uh, we're doing this um, late today. It's almost eight. Well, it is 8.37 almost uh, nine o'clock as we uh prepare to do uh, as we do this program uh very very busy day today back-to-back -to -back productions i just got home and came into the studio and um we were out i was out shooting the um hartford city of hartford hartford connecticut the capital city of connecticut, of, uh, connecticut. uh the uh, the mayor is presenting his budget to the residents of the city and so we were out taping that you can always watch it here on accesstv.org okay so i'm coming in from that and also another sh another production um uh so uh it's it's just been busy and uh, i am here because of our our mantra up day down day good day bad day i don't care how tired you are day take time out of your day for the most important thing in the day and that's bible study now i'm gonna most certainly take time out of my day to eat right so it, it only stands the reason that one would take time out of the day to do what it, consume and and eat the word of god my friends if you do this you will find the quality of your life improving immensely okay because, of course, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Of late, we have been studying uh, the uh, plan of salvation, Christianity 101. We're always talking about faith, uh, and uh, that's been our subject uh, this week, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have whatever lasting life. And uh, I, 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 once again, we're back here. Uh, I, I saw this on my car on Sunday after I was coming from a production downtown at the library. And um, this was in the door. And so all week I've been setting up to read this so that I can read really and, and get into John 3.16. But today we're going to read this gospel track. Okay? Today we're going to read the gospel track. And uh, the gospel track, the gospel is considered hate speech by many uh, because uh, in desperate times such as these, when deception runs rampant, there's no greater enemy than the truth. Okay? Uh, but let's, let's read this. Uh, the track reads, One million souls pour into hell every week. Only those covered by the blood of the Lamb, blood of Christ, will be saved by it. We went over that. Revelations 14, 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Now that's true. All right. I'm not quite sure about the context of how this is placed, particularly if someone is a non-believer and they read this for the first time. So you're trying to scare them into heaven? All right. Because, of course, you being afraid doesn't get you saved. Accepting the completed atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary is what gets you saved. But um, the, um, some of the things that are on here uh, didn't accept Jesus because of your friends. Where are they now? All right. These are some of the excuses people have for not accepting Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know. All I've seen are uh, you slimy, creepy Oh, all I see. Oh, I don't. Oh, I see what's going on here. These aren't excuses. This is this is a conversation that's going on in in hell. Okay, where all of the torment is. All right. So those are the conversations that are going on in there. All right. The greatest double cross in history will be uh, when Satan admits Jesus is Lord. Uh, the Bible does say that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And uh, the time will ultimately come when that will happen. I'm not so sure that's a double cross, though. 
All right. The Bible says every man must work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. All right. And the Bible also says that every man is drawn away uh, of his own lusts, and then he then then and then um, he sins when he is enticed. Right. Let's let's go to James real quick. All right. Now, of course, the one time I don't set up the computer with the because I said I'm not going to use the computer because I'm not going to do I'm not going to quote any direct scripture, so I don't need to put it on. It's only going to be an eight minute Bible study, right? Okay, well, <sighs> James chapter. 13. Let every man, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth death, and, excuse me, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good work, every good gift, and every perfect gift is from above, and a cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All right. Uh, the point, without the fake accent, no man is tempted other than by the things he desires. So, you know, you can't blame the devil for going to hell. You weren't double-crossed, okay? The only people that would be double-crossed by Satan will be the people who believe that Satan is the true rightful heir of the throne of heaven. Now, there's a group of individuals who worship Lucifer on the, the misguided lie and false belief that he is the true heir and that the rebellion that happened in heaven happened and that the one cast out was the real heir to the throne and the rightful son so there's there's a there's a there's a lie that many have embraced they believe that and believe that Satan is the true Messiah. So now, if someone believes that, now they've been that's a, now you've been lied to. You've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, double crossed. But folk that just you know rejected Jesus, you can't blame Satan for that. You can't blame six Christians can't blame Satan when they fall to temptation. No temptation has come to you, which is not uh, common. And uh, most certainly, whatever temptation comes your way, God always provides a way out. So whenever you give in to the temptation, that is to slam the door on God's exit strategy for your temptation. There's always a way out. And the Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. So even if you don't take the way out, there is an alternative to you going off and sinning. And, and the alternative, of, of course, is to not sin. I'm amazed at the number of things people make complicated that are so simple. One and one is what? Two. But then comes the individual that wants to know why. Why is it two? Why is it not three? Why isn't it not like, you know, double, double ones? Could not one and one be considered 11? And they go on and on. And, you know, uh, the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line. Well, how do we know that? And what if you could bring one point closer to the other point and, and, the, and the point arcs? So wouldn't the journey actually be a curve? I mean, you know, it, they overcomplicate everything. Everything. There's an alternative to sin, and it's no. It, it's that simple. Well, what about the temptation that young people face as they go through the biological change? No, 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 no. No. No, it's so simple that satanic forces want to overcomplicate the simplicity of a no and turn it into something that can't be done. Yet, children don't have to be taught how to say no. Okay? So, you can always say no to executing 
the desire that one gets which draws one into an action that leads to death, right? The desire comes, or the lust, then the particular thing that you are drawn to. Everybody's temptation is different, okay? One person's temptation is another man's, who? Who cares, all right? But the thing that you lust after, that you know you have no business going after, when you, when you do so, it is in opposition to the will of God. When you do that, then it is sin. The thought that you have to do it is because you are a sinner all right and so once you act out on the thought death all right so sin is the act is is the thought and death comes as a result of the acting upon the notion or the idea so when you execute said notion or idea that bringeth forth death sin bringeth forth death all right so Every man is tempted, John, excuse me, James chapter 1, verse 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lusts, his own desires, and enticed. All right, so it's something you desire to have. And then you get snared, you get enticed, okay? Then when lust it hath conceived, all right, the fruits of lust, when lust brings forth its child, all right, the fruits of lust, all right, desire, when Lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. All right, so sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. All right, and it is because of this that we have need of this, salvation. All right, so here is where individuals sin. And the reason people go to hell is because there has to be a place where a holy and righteous God separates that dysfunctional, corrupt notion and program that seeks to do error before it seeks to do right, okay? God can rewrite the program by introducing you to the blood of the Lamb, which is the remedy when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, that, that act says that you're willing to submit your will to the will of God. That's what that does, all right? So if you're willing to submit to the will of God instead of your own will, then the salvation comes by faith in the atoning, finishing work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And then opportunity for new, new life comes uh, through what Jesus Christ has done. So God makes a way, and that's what, that's what the salvation is all about. That's what Christianity is all about. The greater message, the, greater, the great commission, taking out that message. That's really the only reason why you remain here after you get saved. Okay? That's it, so that you can go about the great commission. Greater work shall you do. Because it's not, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about all those whom Jesus paid the price for. So, he has commissioned us to do the work once we come to know him. Once again, why this little track is, exists. Because someone felt pressed upon by the Spirit of the Lord to take this track, turn it like this, and put it in my door. And little did they know that it would be the subject of our Gospel Bible message around the world three days and that's how the Lord works all right so tomorrow when we come we're going to be studying John chapter 3 verse 16 our time together has come to an end Pastor Stan has a tremendous amount of work to do I'm sure I will be up for a second night in a row to about 4 30 a.m. with an eight o'clock appointment all right but be that as it may God strengthens us and he renews our strength and if we walk by faith and not by sight, the only thing we have to worry about is how to be a blessing to everyone else. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.